ADHD, or Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, is grabbing headlines and spreading fear amongst parents right around the world. It seems that every child who gets a little bit unruly in class or is slightly too full of energy is suddenly diagnosed with ADHD. And then, of course, you have some people who say it doesn't exist at all. What is really going on? ADHD definitely exists. The diagnosis um, of ADHD is quite a complex um, and specialised uh, assessment that needs to be performed very in, and it's very individualised. Mm. As a general practitioner, I'm often asked by parents, what do I think about someone's behaviour, their children's behaviour? That's a very, very complex question. So initially what we do is ask the uh, specialists, both psychologists and specialist paediatricians to have a look at children's behaviour and just to determine if there are any problems. Well, joining our expert panel today is the voice of experience, paediatrician Professor Michael Conn. Can I just quickly ask, do I call you Prof, Professor? Michael, please. Thank you, Michael, <laughs> please. All right, then. Here we go. There is a lot of confusion out there about ADHD, but a recent story hit the news. You heard it from me. There's no denying nine-year-old Sam is a handful. Where did you put it, Mother? Sam, he's being diagnosed with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. You do yourself an injury, be careful. Are you listening? Last year, his mum reluctantly put him on the ADHD drug dexamphetamine, but there were side effects, no sleep, loss of appetite and Samuel. fits of rage. Hey, Samuel! Samuel, that's not on! He got really angry. He got really, really angry and he was like constantly having brain, ex brain explosions. He'd be throwing furniture. Sam joined an increasing number of Australian kids dosed up on strong drugs such as Ritalin, Concerta and Stratera every day before they go to school. The professionals weren't giving me any avenue to go down but to do that, you know, and that's where I... Driving up the cost are three new, longer-lasting and more expensive drugs. Since February, there have been warnings on leading brands Ritalin and Concerta about psychological dependence, psychotic episodes and severe depression, as well as long-term suppression of growth. We still don't know exactly what these drugs do. If it's doing something like that to your height, what's it doing to the growth of your brain? Lizzie Pearl, Nine News. Michael, that just sounds like a nightmare and so much confusion. How do you explain what it is, what ADHD actually is? ADHD is um, a pattern of behaviour uh, that is characteristic for lack of attention, hyperactivity and impulsivity. Mm -hmm. And it arises from a stressed individual whose brain is trying to solve a problem, they're having difficulty and these patterns of behaviour under that pressure uh, evolve and it occurs much more than their same aged peers. What do you say to a parent when they first come to you and they say, I think my child has this? We take them very seriously. Um, firstly, uh, to make a good diagnosis, you need to take a full history, look at not just the difficulties but the strengths of the child, and then you need to look at the context in which the distress is occurring. So all these elements need to be part of the assessment before a diagnosis of ADHD is made. Can you actually diagnose it? Oh, definitely. It exists and it is diagnosed. So formally it's diagnosed on these behavioural criteria, but also there are functional measures. There are other ways in which we can look to see who's ADHD and who's not. And I just wanted to clear up, ADHD, I know that there's no such thing now as ADD, mm -hmm. but is it also related to autism and Asperger's? There's patterns of behaviour which overlap, but the two conditions are quite separate in terms of what we understand their etiology why they're occurring. Is it genetic? It's highly genetic. So oh, that, it is. So we see very strongly these patterns of ways in which the brain copes with stress, tries to solve uh, cognitive thinking challenges that are inherited right throughout the family tree. I hate to say it, but I've heard some people say it's also related to bad parenting. I think we don't want to look at parents as being good or bad. Yeah. What we want to do is provide parents with information, skills and opportunity that they might parent differently to get a different result in behaviour. What are your thoughts on treating this with Ritalin? I think that we need to look at the evidence. In yeah. Once the diagnosis has been made, clearly the scientific evidence shows us that the best initial treatment is to use a stimulant medication, a medication that increases dopamine in the brain that provides the opportunity for the young person to become treatable in terms of the psychological and other educational interventions.
I know that our audience is chomping at the bit to chat about this. Fiona, you have a story for us. I'd like to ask the panel if they have any tips on how to explain ADHD to friends and family who don't believe in it at mm -hmm. all. Yeah. Uh, absolutely a pivotal question. Everybody mm. needs to be on the same page and clarity around what we're actually saying when we mean ADHD for an individual person is really important. Well, we'll hear more from Fiona in just a moment and we'll ask more from our experts right after the break. Also coming up, the secret silence that could be eroding your marriage. I'm here with Fiona, who has a compelling story to tell about the misdiagnosis of ADHD. Tell us what happened. My son was originally diagnosed with Asperger's when he was about six. Uh, so we struggled with that, doing social skills classes, uh, probably until he was about nine. And due to stomach problems, we ended up at a paediatrician who said, actually, you know, he has severe ADHD. What's your advice to people going through a situation like Fiona where there's all sorts of different diagnosis and treatments? Well, that's right, and it's quite common. And ADHD, I think, would be the condition in childhood that has the most other things that you've got to think through um, in making that diagnosis. And even, you know, your earlier comment about family and friends who don't understand, this is so prevalent in the community because children are given sometimes the, the title of ADHD and, and people haven't done a thorough job of looking at could it be something else, is there a learning disorder, uh, is there dyslexia, things that still affect the way we behave. So the evidence base for the diagnosis is just so important and I think all practitioners need to take a great responsibility for that. Now we're also here with Danielle who has a really interesting situation where she has two beautiful sons. She has Nash who is 11 who has ADHD and Harley who is here joining us today. He is 13 and he does not have it. What's it like for you with the two sons having different situations? Very, very interesting. Some days are harder than others. Um, it's two different ty types of parenting skills we need to do, which often affects Harley because he feels it's not fair that we deal with Nash a different way we deal with Harley. Harley, what is that like for you to have a brother who has ADHD? Well, sometimes it feels a little unfair mm. and like, like other things go his way where stuff should go my way. Mm, yeah. What's your advice to other people your age who are going through this? Well, just to like, leave them alone and take deep breaths and walk away from them if they're annoying mm. you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful advice. Thank you so much for sharing it. I know that for you, Julie, you've got an interesting story to tell as well. Share it, please. Yeah, well, um, just for what it's worth, my experience is that um, my nine-year-old, ever since he was probably about two, had episodes of hyperactivity, crazy behaviour, huge emotional outbursts and lack of concentration. And I guess luckily, because I, we have a bit of a family history of allergies and intolerances, I uh, embarked on an elimination diet and actually realised that he's reacting to colours and preservatives. And, and that may be a, a way that uh, ADHD might be misdiagnosed if, if you're eating those things every day. I know that you would definitely like to react to this one. Well, I, I, a lot of families come in and tell a story like that and they will say uh, we've tried an elimination diet particularly very very strong preservatives and colors and you know so there are some other bits and pieces in that and in that individual case they've seen some remarkable improvement frustratingly the bigger studies and the studies that are being done comparing groups at the moment um, it's not giving us that consistent kind of evidence would you agree yes no look that's right the, the treatment shouldn't be worse than the problem and sometimes the diets can get so restricted because of the concerns that in fact they are having a bigger impact on the health of the young person. But again in your situation where you have found something quite simple and something quite effective, I think you need to pursue that. Shane, I know that you also had some thoughts on the colours of food. Well, in general practice again, um, I see a lot of um, parents who come in and they, they relate 
same story that you've just given me. And they question the use of colourings, flavours, and, and of course people aren't uh, familiar that we have, are adding a lot of salicylate and amine to um, foods, and they can make you crazy. Shane, I just have to ask, what on earth are salicylates? I don't even know if I said that right. Well, they're, they're a, a product in food, sometimes naturally occurring, but now often added that enhance flavours and enhance colours, and they are literally, they're legally allowed to say that there is no um, artificial colour or flavour, and that's rubbish because it is. It's, it's acting in exactly the same manner, so we have to be very careful. Nicola, I know that for you, you'd, you've got a, a few comments on this subject as well. Yeah, um, I'm actually a food coach and we've had um, many cases of medically diagnosed children with ADHD who've come to see us as a last resort. We've removed all chemicals from their diet. They live a natural, eat, sorry, eat a natural diet um, and within less than a week to two weeks, the symptoms have completely gone. So that's, that's been my experience. Which again, I think, raises the question of how good was that initial diagnosis? Mm. Because ADHD, you know, keep in mind, is a brain-based, it's a neurodevelopmental condition. There are actual differences um, between an ADHD and a non-ADHD person. So if uh, that initial diagnosis is not being done thoroughly, then we are going to often get kids who are mislabeled and inappropriately labeled. Well, here is some important advice for all of you, anyone that is worried about ADHD. Talk to your child's teachers first. Seek psychological support. Medication can provide life-changing help. Use good health practices like unprocessed food and one-on-one -on -one time with your child. Michael, thank you so much for your help and your wisdom today. Thank, thank you so much for joining us. Now, for more help with ADHD, you can contact the following places. After the break, how an issue that sounds funny could be quite serious. Uh, I can still remember that moment of her just jumping up and it's burned into my brain 